Assalamu alaikum and very good day to Madam Sharia and fellow friends. In this video, our team would like to talk about sustainable transportation. But before we jump into the topic, let me introduce my team members. Firstly, Lukman, Amira Fazlin, Lydia, our presenter, Nabiha and Aisha. Last but not least, me, myself, Fridaus. So, without wasting time, let's check it out. Transportation is a medium that carries one person from one point to another point. Sustainable transportation is crucial in sense of social environment and also climate impacts which can be measured in terms of transportation operation and also the logistic of the transportation. Transportation is a contributor to the pollutions of emissions which can be in terms of the type of the transportation and also mobility of the transportation which can be different based on area development of the transportation infrastructure and also distance. Based on previous studies shows that private vehicles or transportation have high chances in pollutants of emissions compared to public but it truly depends on the mobility structure for example in an area with high density of populations it can contribute traffic congestions and also high pollutants of emissions such as in Kuala Lumpur but it is unfair to compare Kuala Lumpur with another city such as Kuantan in Pahang where they are different in terms of development in infrastructure itself the objective of this study is to see the relationship between in the urban condition or structure and also the infrastructure development in transportation in the areas to see that the efficiency of the urban structure or conditions should be in a tight regulation with a proper tax system, proper policy and also a high quality of infrastructure planning which can improve the quality of life and also reduce the pollutants in that area. It is important for urban planning and also infrastructure in the transportation development itself in order to have efficient and sustainable transportation of public and also private transportation. So the discussion that we are going with this topic is that transportation is a sector where policymakers are maximizing their benefits by perceiving that a good road infrastructure indicates a good economy situation. With a dominant policy in this country where they are investing a lot in road infrastructure which to enhance the competitiveness between regions and also urban areas which however it does not indicate a good economy because a sustainable economy fully responsible in terms of economy, environment and society. So we are discussing on two uh, sectors here. The first one is urban regions where the urban regions we have have a better infrastructure of transportation which will lead to traffic congestions thus it will lead to high petrol usage and produce high pollutants of energy in the air and the second one is lack of enforcement and also restrictions where for example the half of the society are using old vehicle which have bad quality and also does not have advanced technology in it and it will eventually produce pollutions which will increase the pollutants emissions especially in the congested area therefore different in views is very difficult to curb it especially for example in clan valley where ingenious schemes are within the transportation planning are resolving the problems on the transportation infrastructure by expanding the road to solve the problems such as traffic congestions and also the problems on car parks when it is actually an inaccurate solution because it will only encourage people to use private transportation which contributes um, a higher pollutants of emissions in the air. So it should have been a solution in encouraging people in high density population area to use a better infrastructure development in transportation such as public transportation because it can preserve the nature environment and also the economy so this should be soft immediately because in each country or area we are going to have increasing numbers in populations which will affect the environment and also 
contribute to a higher problems if these solutions are not going to be discussed among the policymakers and also respective departments on improving the transportation system in the area. For recommendation, we suggest in promoting sustainable urban transport and lifestyle like any other developed countries in the world because their people are more keen in using public transportation instead of their own private vehicles. Our second recommendation is to provide developing cities with effective road-based public transport. For example, in Malaysia, I believe there is only in Kuala Lumpur that have a fixed schedule for buses and not in Selangor. And in the states of Selangor, we have many developing cities that actually needs a fixed schedule for buses so that we can encourage more people to use public transportation. The third recommendation is to popularize the non-motorized mode of transport, for example, like the use of bicycles to go to work. And if we can provide the cyclists more safety lane on the road, I believe we can encourage more people in using bicycles to go to work. And last but not least is to run a campaign regularly so that we can educate people about the benefits and the advantages of sustainable transport and lifestyle. For your conclusions, for us to achieve sustainability is through the usage of public transport, to improve our car infrastructure to suit the flow of time, and rules and regulations are needed to eliminate all factors that might hinder us from achieving our goals. That's it for the presentation. Thank you.